in all my years of travelling, I don't think I've ever seen a major airport like Amsterdam just as quiet as it is here today. It's really eerie. So today I'm heading up to Stockholm in Sweden. I've got a few engagements up there this week and getting there by plane is the only way that you can really do it at the moment because there's land borders closed everywhere. This is the first time I have flown in about four months now. So it's gonna be interesting to see what's changed and how the different things are at the moment. At the time I took this flight, Amsterdam was down to around 25 departures a day. As a result of this, the airport was pretty quiet, but the flights were all fairly full as most cities saw just one flight a day from Amsterdam. It's a really surreal feeling walking around such a deserted airport. The Mayor has passed the municipal ordinance with regards to social distancing as a precautionary measure against the spread of COVID-19. To reduce the number of touch points around the terminal, KLM's self-checking machines are all out of use. Security was a breeze with so few passengers. The floors marked out in one and a half metre intervals to help practice social distancing compared to the two metres in use in the UK. Passengers were still pretty good at social distancing in the security line though. Once airside, Amsterdam at least, most shops and restaurants are open with some exceptions. There's more people airside than landside, but it's still pretty quiet compared to the normal hustle and bustle of Schiphol. Another side effect of the coronavirus crisis is that most airport lounges are closed. The KLM Crown Lounge in Schiphol is shut, but they do have another lounge open somewhere else in the terminal. So as of now, while I'm making this video, face masks aren't actually a requirement here in the Netherlands. They will be very soon. Um, but KLM require them, but even so, I've not seen many people wearing them even here in the airport, so. Personally, I know it makes you look a bit of a wally, but I don't really care. It makes people a little bit more comfortable around you, and so be it. And social distancing, not really much of an issue here at um, Schiphol because there's not many people around to social distance. Um, it's only one and a half metres here as well compared to the two metres that we have back in England for some reason. Um, it's, for some reason it's different here, but um, yeah, well, look at those things. Planes! How long since I have seen some of those? So KLM are one of the few airlines still flying at the moment and even they have so many planes grounded up. Their, their route network is literally a handful of flights a day um, across Europe. And there's only one a day to Stockholm, for example, like the one I'm taking and usually they have four or five hits. And Stockholm is one of the ones that is still running. A lot of them have been stopped altogether. It's um, not good, not good at all. My gate today was right at the furthest end of the furthest pier. I'm not quite sure why with barely any flights they're using the gates at the furthest ends of the airport. I can only presume it's either to keep passengers from mixing too much or it could just be the Jeremy Clarkson factor. And then you get to a corner and is it the end? No, there's another mile of corridor to get down. No one in the history of aviation has ever flown from gate one. There are no gate ones anywhere in the world. Here's your ticket, gate 374. Where's gate one? When I eventually got to gate 374, um, I mean gate D84, I got to see my ride for my first flight after the crisis. It's a Boeing 737-700 delivered brand new to KLM in 2011 and now painted in their special 100 year anniversary livery. At the gate area most seats are taped off to help ensure social distancing. Have your own boarding card ready to scan. 
and keep a safe distance from each other from at least one and a half meters. Thank you. Morning via one lane, so you may come forward, keep a safe distance from each other of at least one and a half meters, and when you're here at the gate, please put on your safety mask. All passengers waiting in the lane, you have to put on your uh, safety mask, please. Thank you. Hello. Hi. All the gate agents are behind these temporary plastic screens to help reduce the risk of infection. Okay, here goes. It was time to do something that seemed impossible just a few weeks ago. Get on board a commercial flight. Hello. Good morning. Thank you. Once on board, KLM are blocking the middle seats and only selling the windows and the aisles, effectively turning every seat into a European business class seat. A snack and a drink are left on the seat and there's no cabin service at all during the rest of the flight. It feels like so long since I've been able to be on a plane, but it's good. It's all very strange though still. Okay, in verband with coronavirus. For your safety in relation to the coronavirus virus, we provide a highly modified service on this flight. On your seat you will find a package containing food and drinks for the entire flight. Our drink service has been simplified as well. We offer you water and soft drinks only. We regret that this is not what you may expect from us and we hope for your understanding in these exceptional circumstances. We also kindly request that you adhere the following guidelines when boarding and during the flight. During the entire flight, it is mandatory to wear your face mask or appropriate face covering. Try to maintain distance between yourself, other passengers and cabin crew. For example, when you are in line for the lavatories, try to avoid physical contact. Collect your waste in the disposal bag and take it with you upon disembarking. Try to avoid unnecessary contact and prevent going to the galley. If you need assistance, you can press the crew call button. Also adhere to the following general guidelines. Do not shake hands, sneeze or cough into your elbow, use paper tissue and wash your hands regularly with soap and water. Thank you for your collaboration. Taxiing out to the runway, it soon became very clear the extent of the current situation, with KLM aircraft parked up all over the airport. Despite there only being a handful of departures today, we were still going from the Polderbahn, the furthest runway from the terminals, with a taxi of over 4 miles for us today. Eventually though we were lining up and I heard the 737's engine spool up, a sound that never felt quite so good. Our route today then took us northeast out of Amsterdam to cross into Germany before crossing Denmark and starting our descent over Sweden into Stockholm. Flight time today was 1 hour and 36 minutes at a cruising altitude of 41,000 feet.
snack service today consisted of a bottle of water, a sandwich and a Dutch special cookie. As we cruise across Germany at 41,000 feet on board what would normally be a pretty routine KLM 737 flight, I started to realise I was enjoying a magic of flight that I haven't felt for years. It feels more liberating than I ever thought to actually be sat here at 40,000 feet over, could be anywhere, but that view out there, it kind of gives me hope. There, there is a normal somewhere and it may feel like a very long way away at the moment but it's there and it's a good thing As we started our descent over the beautiful countryside of Sweden, I savoured every moment of this flight. I was glued to the window like an excited child on their first ever magical flight. This was just a 737 flight, but yet I was enjoying it as much as I enjoyed flights on Soviet airliners over Russia or a turboprop airliner landing in some remote community in Africa. The magic was back and I never wanted this flight to end. Sadly though, it was about to end and we touched down slightly behind schedule at Stockholm's Orlando Airport. One-way flights are expensive right now due to the lack of seats available combined with the high demand. My flight today cost £288 for a one-way ticket or 40 pence per mile. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, sir. Have a nice day. You too. Bye bye. Bye bye. Stepping off the plane into Stockholm, things felt very different to Gainter back in the UK. Masks are pretty much never seen, shops and restaurants are open and the only sign that things aren't quite back to normal yet is the deserted airports, occasional signage and of course the social distancing measures that are pretty much everywhere right now. All flights are going from Terminal 5 at the moment but even still the terminal's eerily quiet. Before leaving the airport I've got to say hello to a cute new friend. Like any business, behind every airline is its people and behind each of those people is a real family. And to be honest, they're struggling right now. The staff, the families, this knock-on impact of what's happening at the moment is affecting so many people. Going forward, we're going to have to support these people. And if that means flying more and travelling more, well, we're going to have to do it. But the question is, how do you do that in a safe manner? Now, sure, you can send planes 50% full, but that's never going to be a sustainable option, not for any airline, but right now, it may be the only option. Going forward, I think eventually airlines are going to have to start filling their planes just as they were before, and the emphasis is going to be on flying healthy and stopping people from travelling if they are unwell, but <laughs> it's just a really awkward situation to um, move forward from. Thanks so much for watching, take care and I'll see you next time.